Okay, let's make this fun. Write down the top five to 10 things that make you happy, that give you pleasure. And let's see how many of them match with the following list. And try to guess the thing that's number one on this list. Now, I might do a little giveaway or whatever, but don't cheat, bro. Like, just guess, have fun. Pleasure, reward, happiness are vastly complex systems in the brain, but one neurotransmitter is central to understanding them all, dopamine. Now at first glance, dopamine is the feel-good chemical of the brain, as it's released in almost all instances where we feel intense pleasure. Now while this is a somewhat superficial understanding of dopamine's role in the body, measuring its release in the brain and the activity of its release centers is pretty indicative of the things that motivate us and make us feel good. All right, let's hop into this countdown. Let's find out the top 10 things that make you feel good. Number 10, surprises. Brain scans show that humans are wired to derive pleasure from unexpected events. Participants whose brain activity was measured with an MRI showed much more activity in the nucleus accumbens, a major dopamine releasing machine, when they received an unexpected reward versus those who received a reward that they were told beforehand that they would get. In some participants, dopamine levels match that of taking a small dose of cocaine. This has huge relevance for the process by which people become addicted to gambling and even drugs. Both present the brain with highly novel and surprising stimuli, and those neurons take notice. Number nine, art and music. Dopamine is heavily involved in our appreciation of art and music. Researchers at London's University College have found that when subjects experience a piece of art or music that they describe as beautiful, their medial orbital frontal cortex lit up, their blood flow increased, and their cerebral dopamine levels surged. Now, while scientists really struggle to explain the evolutionary significance of either art or music, they believe that it has something to do with our, our natural novelty seeking. Number eight, cooperating. In this day and age, I'll take any hope in humanity that I can get. In one heartwarming study, two participants played a money game, and they had to choose between cooperating with the other player and splitting some reward money, or stabbing them in the back and taking all the money for themselves. Each subject was made aware of the other participant's decision at the same time. Now, while some people definitely decided to take all the money and definitely did derive a lot of pleasure from that decision, much more brain activation and dopamine release occurred when both players decided to cooperate. Number seven. Punishing jerks. Now imagine if you played that game that I just described and you chose to cooperate but the other person decided to take all of the money. How do you think that would make you feel? Probably pretty shitty, if not pretty angry. You know what would make you feel a lot better though? Revenge, getting them back, making them suffer or pay in some way. A number of studies show that not only do people derive great pleasure from punishing someone that's cheated them or violated some norm that they hold dear, but that they release even more dopamine if they have to pay to do so. So not only would you like to see them pay, you would pay to see them pay. And it'll probably be worth every penny. Which your evil ass? Number six, the downfall of people we envy. So not only does your evil ass love punishing people, you love watching people suffer. Let me explain. In one neuroimaging study, participants showed activation in brain regions involved in pain perception. Whenever they heard descriptions of hypothetical people that had things that they wanted, like wealth or beauty or status or popularity, etc., This activation is a neurological definition of envy. You feel pain when people have what you want. Well, the more activation of this neural pathway, the more dopamine was released in these people's brains when they heard about the misfortune of the hypothetical people that had what they wanted. In other words, hearing about the downfall of people that have what we want feels pretty damn good. The trials and the tribulations and the downfalls of celebrities is the billion dollar business of tabloids and magazines. And there are a few things, actually only five things, our brains love more. Number five. Winning. Winning feels good. And while winning modest-sized lotteries and random awards certainly makes us feel good, there is no kind of winning like winning competition. Now competing itself is intrinsically rewarding. Even without the promise of winning, or rather because the prospect of winning is so uncertain, people just love to compete. But the thrill from winning such a competition is unmatched. Dopamine and testosterone surge in the brains of winners, making them more confident, more bold, and even smarter in some cases. When you lose a competition on the flip side, dopamine and testosterone levels plummet, even levels lower than your baseline. Number four, beautiful people. When you see an attractive person, the left ventral tegmental area of your brain becomes active and pumps out dopamine. The right VDA also lights up, and this makes it more likely that you will reach out and make a connection or contact with that person. Now, it makes sense that dopamine with its role in, in motivation and attention would reward you for seeking out supposedly good gene carriers to make babies with. I can just imagine the dopamine that is gushing through your brains right now. Number three, 
looking at your baby. Now, I recorded an entire brain snack just on this topic. The crazy cocktail of chemicals that gets released from your brains when you lock eyes with your little monster. So go ahead and check that brain snack out right here. Number two, food. Duh, no surprise there, right? We love to eat. This wiring is so deeply embedded in our brains that it is present in all animals. Food evokes dopamine release in hungry individuals of every species. Keyword being hungry though. Have you ever felt so full that you, you get literally disgusted by food? Here, the brain has completely shut down dopamine release to get you and your fat ass to stop eating. Still though, certain foods, particularly those that are rich in, in fats and sugars, are potent enough for rewards that they can literally hijack your dopaminergic reward system and get you to keep eating even in the absence of hunger. Now, before I reveal the number one dopamine dumping phenomenon in your brain, guys, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel so I can continue to spill this neurological tea with you on a weekly basis. Go ahead, I'ma wait. Okay, you ready? Number one. Sex. No natural experiences come close to the explosion of dopamine and other feel-good chemicals that get released from your brain before, during, and after sex. This is your brain eating your favorite foods. This is your brain eating your favorite... Wait. Never mind. For humans, just thinking about sex, dreaming about sex, singing about sex is enough to ignite this chemical pathway. Now, of course, our very existence depends on this oh-so-heavenly act. So nature rewards us, quite dutifully, for getting our freak on. So how'd you do? How many of your pleasures were on this top 10 list? Did you guess the top one correctly? Without cheating? You can see my top 10 list below. I can tell you now, one of my top 10 is you subscribing to my channel. Now there's one more thing I want to mention before you guys go. I didn't talk about drugs in this video. I stuck to natural phenomenon in this brain snack. But even sex itself doesn't compare to the amount of dopamine that's released from the brain when a user takes cocaine or heroin. I'll save that for another brain snack though. If you found anything useful in this video, please like, comment, let me know what it is. If you think someone else will find it useful, share your snacks with them. Thanks for watching. See you next snack time. time.